Hello and thanks for choosing Pebblehost. Today we'll be showing you how to install Monpack onto your server. We'll be looking at two separate mod packs, the 1.7.10 pack as well as the All the Mods 3 pack. We've chosen these mod packs as they have slightly different installation methods. While the methods shown won't cover every mod pack, it should provide a general idea. We've gone to the Technic pack site in order to find the 1.7.10 pack. You can find the server download button on the right hand side of the page. So let's go ahead and download the server pack. We're also going to download the All the Mods 3 pack. This mod pack can be found on the CurseForge site. Go ahead and scroll down to the Recent Files section. From here, we can click Server Packs, which we can then select a version. We'll go ahead and select the latest version by clicking the top Server Pack button. Once here, we can scroll down to Additional Files and click Download. We have both of these packs downloaded and we can open them in a zip file manager. I'm using 7-zip. Uh, you can also use another program such as WinRAR, um, but you'll want to open both of these up and you'll notice that the files are slightly different. Now in the 1.7.10 pack, all we have is the launchserver.bat and the launchserver.sh. Both of these we actually don't need, so we can just go ahead and delete these. Now we don't need these because the Forge Universal jar is already here as well as the Minecraft jar. These are the two jar files we'll need in order to boot up the server. If we take a look at the All the Mods 3 Light pack, it's a little bit different. As you can see, we have a Forge jar file, however, this is the Forge installer. We also are missing the Minecraft server jar file. In order to install these, we'll run the installer that comes with the pack. In order to run the installer, I'm going to click the Extract button in 7-zip, and then click the three dots to open up the File Explorer. From here, I'm going to select Desktop and click Make New Folder. We'll go ahead and click on the folder to select it and then click OK. Once more, click OK and this will extract all of the files that are in the zip file into the folder in our desktop. Now we can go ahead and run the install and this will pop up the Modpacks installer. As you can see, they've got a um, little kind of creative installer here with multiple colors but the main thing you're going to look for is installing forge and if we look in the folder it's already installed the minecraft server jar file so now it's waiting to install the forge jar file keep in mind the time it takes to install this will depend on your internet speed as you can see it's now changed and it's restarting this is actually trying to start the server and we don't want this so we can exit out of this command prompt from here we're going to delete the install.bat as well as the installer text document. We can also delete the forge installer jar file, as well as the server start.sh. Now that we've deleted these files, this pack is ready to be uploaded to our server. Let's take a look at the 1.7.10 pack again, and I've opened this back up into 7-zip. I'll go ahead and click Extract, click the More option, and click the Desktop. I'm now going to create a new folder and rename that folder to the 1.7.10 pack. This is just to stay organized between the two packs, and so we can select the 1.7.10 pack, click OK, click OK again, and this will extract it to that folder. Again, to stay organized, we're going to rename that other folder that we extracted all the mods 3 to the mod pack name. Now that we have these two mod packs, let's go ahead and show how to upload this to our server. So I've went ahead and connected to my server via FileZilla, and if you're not sure how to do this, we have a FTP video explaining the full process of connecting to your server with an FTP client. I do recommend checking out that video if you have any issues trying to do this. As you can see, we have numerous files that are already in our server. We'll need to delete these before we upload the mod pack. In order to do this, there's a built-in utility in the panel. This will be under the server script section once we click the utilities dropdown, and we can go ahead and click remove all server files. It's going to ask if we really want to apply this script as this will remove all of our server's files. So if you have anything in the server that you may want to keep, you're going to want to make a backup of that first before running this utility. Now that this is applied, we can go ahead and click start and this will wipe our server. I've brought up console to monitor the script running and to ensure that all files have been deleted. As you can see, all files were cleared so we can stop the server. If we go back to FileZilla and refresh, there's only a few files left over, and this was because it re-downloaded the 1.15 jar. We can go ahead and just click delete, and this will wipe all of those files. Now that these files are wiped, let's go ahead and upload the All the Mods 3 Lite mod pack. 
We're going to open up the folder, highlight all files with inside, and drag them into the server. Once again, the speed of this upload will be determined on your internet speed. So for any larger mod packs, this may take a bit longer if you don't have as fast internet. While we're waiting for this to upload, I do want to note that the installation process from here on out will be exactly the same for both of these mod packs. This is because all installers have been ran and we have the required files for both of these packs to run properly. As you can see, the files are very similar. In fact, we have a Forge Universal jar here and we have a Forge Universal jar here. These are the two jars you'll need in order to boot up pretty much any mod pack. Another required folder that you must have is the libraries folder. Without it, the server will not boot. As you can see, all files have been transferred to our server, so let's go back to the server panel, and I'll show you how to boot the server using these two jar files. I've went ahead and split these two windows in order to show you how to copy the jar file name into the jar file slot. The best way to do this is to simply click the jar file name, click rename, and then copy that name. This is to ensure that the name stays exactly the same as you copy it over to the panel. I'm now going to erase the contents that are in the jar file field and paste in what I've just copied. I'm going to click save and as you can see this will update to the default jar file and the jar file that I've selected in the field. From here we can go ahead and start the server. This is going to install Minecraft 1.12.2 vanilla. As you can see, the server is online and the startup is marked as done, so we'll go ahead and stop the server. In FTP, we're going to refresh to bring up the new files generated and then select the world folder and delete this. We're going to delete this folder because whenever we run the forge jar file, this is going to generate the modded world. If you don't delete this, the world will not be modded and perhaps may not generate the required resources in order to make it a modded pack. Let's go back to the main panel page and go ahead and copy the forge jar file name. So once again, we're just going to click it and then click copy and erase the contents in the jar file field and paste in the forge jar file name. So we've got uh, forge 1.12.2 universal.jar. Let's click save. And now once again, we're going to start the server. However, this time I'm going to go ahead and click console as I'm going to want to monitor the progress of this starting. Keep in mind, mod packs can take a few minutes in order to boot, and this will mainly depend on the size of the mod pack. If you have a larger mod pack, it's going to take a longer time to boot. One thing to take note of is whenever the server is starting, you'll notice the green dot sometimes is on before you can actually join the server. The best thing to do is to look in console and to try to identify whenever spawn area is fully generated and whenever the server is marked as done. All right, so the server has now fully booted and in order to join, we'll need to use the same version as the server. That's gonna do it for this tutorial. If you have any questions regarding anything we've covered in this video, feel free to join the Pebbleos Discord and we'd be more than happy to help you there.